Riverside salamander is endangered in Tennessee, so it's state listed as endangered. It's not federally listed at this time, but at the state level, uh, it was listed back in 2018. Um, a lot of that is uh, because at the time we didn't know how many populations we had, but the ones that we knew about were threatened by a lot of urban development and, and just urban sprawl. Well, we, we don't know where every population uh, exists here in Middle Tennessee. It is a species that's it's limited, its range is limited in Middle Tennessee. Um, and, and we really didn't know what we had until about 1997, uh, because that's when streamside salamander was actually split from the smallmouth salamander, which is uh, another species in the same uh, uh, genus. Um, and, and they were always thought to be the same species, but they had different breeding preferences. Um, one liked to breed in ephemeral wetlands, whereas this species likes to breed in ephemeral streams. And, and actually through genetic work and, and some differences in tooth morphology, uh, they split it out into what is streamside salamanders. And so uh, it's a relatively new species for the state uh, since it was just split out in the last 20 years or so. Um, and so we're still learning about populations that we have in the state. We've added uh, several populations here in recent years, uh, but surprisingly, a lot of the populations that we find are actually in high uh, area, high, highly populated areas here in Middle Tennessee. So when the salamanders are closer to the surface, uh, the the transmitter has a the signal is pushed out further easier. So the further they go underground, the weaker the signal strength is. So we were standing right there and we didn't pick anything up, but as soon as we cr crossed the stream, we picked up some sort of signal. I think she's pretty far underground, probably due to the temperature outside, um, because we're getting a really small range of signal right here. Like almost nothing right here, but then it's pinging out right there. Um, and then try not to step under that branch on that branch because I think she's under there. But then just past it, there's nothing. The salamanders that we're tracking have bred because um, we've been tracking these for about five weeks now. Uh, so those animals are done breeding. So what we're seeing in the stream, that's the salamander's breeding habitat. And so they migrate to these habitats in the wintertime, uh, basically December through March, and they lay their, they breed and lay their eggs. And then once they're done with that, they move to the terrestrial habitat. And that's challenging for a species like this because it uses multiple habitats throughout the year. Um, and so the ones that are in the stream, they're actually actively laying eggs. And so they don't all come on the same day or same night. It's, it's spread out over several weeks uh, during the breeding season. So, so we've got, um, we're tracking some, some animals that bred early, uh, but we're also seeing differences in breeding times at individual sites. We've got some sites that the breeding was over with um, about Christmas. Um, here, there's obviously breeding still occurring uh, the 1st of February. So with, um, with the species being relatively new, uh, we have an understanding of, of habitats it uses throughout the year, uh, but we don't know how much the terrestrial habitat uh, is necessary for, for supporting populations of this animal. Um, and, and we know that, that a lot of emphasis has been placed uh, in recent years on protecting the breeding habitat, which is the stream, uh, but we don't know how much of that terrestrial habitat, which is necessary to support those populations, it is required uh, for, for maintenance. And, and so through impl implementing telemetry, uh, we're hoping to track the animals for a, a short period, maybe not the entire period it takes for them to uh, migrate away from these breeding seasons, or breeding streams, excuse me. Um, but we're hoping we can identify how much, how much of the habitat um, that, that they need uh, to sustain these populations post-breeding. But the other thing too is we're actually identifying the habitat itself. I mean, we got a rough idea, but this will give us an idea of some of the characteristics at the micro scale that they're utilizing.